Hi, I'm Jason, and this is the Pattern to Print channel. And today I wanted to show you a resource that I've been using for a couple years, and one that's uh, had some new functionality added recently that's really helped my workflow and some of the projects I, I work on. And it's a website, and I'm going to bring it up right now. And let's see here. So this website is uh, set up by Arjan, I guess, Westerdeep. I'm my Dutch pronunciations aren't very good. And he has this website where he has a lot of um, kind of open source tools that you can use and some stuff that you can also contact him to use um, commercially. And uh, and he seems like a, he comes up with some pretty cool stuff. I mean, even just moving your mouse around, you can kind of see he's got these uh, arrow things going on. And if you scroll down, he's got um, sort of a list of a lot of the things that he works on. Uh, one of the cool things that he has, he has this uh, Legoizer where you can take a STL model and um, he can convert it into a um, uh, Lego bricks that you could print out and, and put together yourself. But the tool that I'm going to show is um, the thing called Bitmap to Vector. And what this product does is, is it takes an image, like uh, any kind of a, like a JPEG, uh, you know, GIF, it's kind of listed there, all the, the file form rats. And these are all um, raster files, which means that they're pixels. So if you zoom in really close, you can see that, they're, um, that they have a definite definition. And for a lot of the things that I do, um, I, I need vector files. And I found that the vector converters, if you use GIMP or if you use Adobe Illustrator, they have like ray tracers where basically they take your image and then they kind of trace um, where the colors are. But both of those tools really didn't get the detail that I needed. And this tool does it on a pixel by pixel basis. So it is converting your image file into a vector file perfectly. Um, you know, each pixel is exactly like the vector file. And so what I would do is when I wanted to um, create, when I was converting these uh, photographs into 3D prints and I would convert them into like 16 different colors and do a lot of filament swaps, um, I needed it to be exact. And so what I would do is I would use this tool and I import it into Inkscape and then I would use the Inkscape to open SCAD, the extension. And I would convert it then to an open SCAD file where then I can create my STL files. Now, the process worked well. It did exactly what I wanted, but it was a lot of steps. And recently, uh, Arjan has added new functionality so that it'll take your image, not only save it to an SVG file, but it'll save it directly into an open SCAD file. So if we look down here um, into these uh, choices, you can do SCAD extension and that'll take your image and convert it into an open SCAD file which is is really wonderful and I also want to take a moment to say that I have worked with Arjun a lot over the last couple years I tend to do a lot of edge cases with this product and he's been super responsive and even though I'm not paying him or anything like this he really has uh, fixed these tools until they're really kind of bomb proof and they've been exactly what I what I needed so the tool is really simple to use. All you need to do is take an image and drop it in and it'll convert it and, the, and ask you to download it or whatever. And so when I was thinking about a, a model to try, I wanted to do something kind of simple, just a few colors so I could do a simple film and swap, but I didn't want to do something that required, you know, a special printer. I wanted to do just a single head print. So I decided to do um, a style that, um, where you can print different colors and the different colors at different thicknesses. So you print to a certain height, you swap the filament, and then you print to another height, and then you swap the filament, and you do it one more time. Um, and so that's what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, upload uh, an image that only has really three colors to it, and then I'll do a three color print. So the image I'm going to use is um, a logo from the Detroit Tigers from when I was uh, when I was a child. Uh, the team was really good at the time and uh, sort of the logo that I, I remember it from. And so I found that by doing a simple internet search that I could, um, you know, it was really easy to find a logo in like a JPEG format. And uh, so the logo I got um, is right here. And 
before I use this tool, I mentioned that I wanted to do uh, this into, into three colors. And a lot of times when you download a JPEG file or whatever, it like may look like it's three colors, but with the lines that are transition, they're sort of like off colors in between. And so if we zoom into this, we can see around the edges that you've got all sorts of different shades of orange, just sort of the orange bleeds into white, and the same thing with the blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, do some pre-processing in GIMP, and the open source software, to make this only three colors. And it's pretty straightforward to do. Um, so if you open it up, um, open the file up into GIMP. And in this case, what I want to do is I want to index it to three colors, because that's what I have here. And if I go to image mode, we see that it's already indexed. So what I have to do is sort of unindex. So I'll switch it to RGB and then re-index it. And we see with our choices, uh, it says generate optimum palette and number of colors. So I already was in here before. So I want to convert this into just three colors. And if we hit convert, it'll take it down into just three colors. So if I zoom in, really big, you can see that we no longer have those um, sort of those uh, light oranges to dark oranges when it merges into the white. So we only have three colors. Now the important thing here is now we have to export it back and we only want to use one of two file formats, either a bitmap or a PNG file. And the reason for that is that we have to use a lossless um, a lossless graphic file. If we go back to a JPEG, it's going to put those shaded shades of oranges back in there. So we have to do a um, we need to do a file format that's lossless. And so usually you're going to use PNG. That's uh, usually the simplest because it's a smaller file size, even though it's uh, not losing any of it, um, any of it. So after I um, exported it into um, exported it into a PNG. I'll open the PNG file again and we'll see um, after it was exported it still it still worked. There's no uh, shading. Um, so we just have those three colors. So that's exactly what we want. So now let's go and um, so the tool is really simple to use. You just take your graphic file, drop it in, and then um, the neat thing about this program is it's uh, browser based. So there's no cloud service. There's no, uh, it never, the file never leaves your computer. So Arjun isn't collecting copies of all your graphic files or whatnot. So everything runs on the browser. Now the drawback of that though is a couple things. If you have a really slow computer, then it might take a while. If you use a really big file, sometimes it takes a while for it to run and there really isn't anything to say, hey, I'm done processing. So if you download the file and it doesn't, if it's blank or something like that, then just wait a while longer and wait for the script to run and then it'll, it'll be there. So all you do is save it as, uh, click the save button and then it saves it to your computer. Now, let's go to the OpenSCAD file um, that it created. So I've got the preview on, and you can see that it brought it in into the three colors, and it looks exactly like the image. And if you zoom in, you know, it's it's all there. Now, sometimes a little bit of the preview will look funky because there's a lot of um, kind of uh, inner inner joins and, and uh, deleted things and whatnot. Um, but but it works works quite well. So um, what we need to do is we need to create three separate STL files, one for each color. And if you notice, um, now if we rendered this right now, it would just look like one square because when it renders, the STL doesn't have a color, so it's just going to kind of be the default green that OpenSCAD shows. But here um, we see that there is color information in the... Um, in the file, and in fact, if I do this little um, do this, so what this uh, little symbol does is it doesn't pro it sort of skips processing that. And I hit the uh, the preview button again. We notice that whole chunk of whites disappeared. So we know that this color is the color white. And so what I do is I do a search and replace. I take so I find out what three colors I have, and then I'll search and replace all of the um, the one color and sort of 
um, comment it out or have it not render so that uh, I can do then render it and then do the STL of the of this that particular color. Now, when you're doing a search and replace on a really big open SCAD file like this, I really recommend that you use a uh, text editor because the find and replace in open SCAD is pretty slow. So um, I'm on a Mac, and so if, on a Mac, the most popular one is uh, something called Text Wrangler. If you're using Windows, you probably want to use Notepad++. Um, if you're on Linux, you know what you want to use. Uh, so, um, so here, if we do the um, search and replace, uh, so I do find, so I just copy over this color, copy, paste, and then paste again, and do uh, the little symbol, and do replace all, and it's found 145. And so the neat thing here, so if I go and save it, when I go back to open SCAD, um, I can reload the, um, it should just uh, reload. And so now you'll see it brings up the, um, what the other editor had, um, had created. So now if we do a preview, we notice all the white's gone. So then what I do is then I take all the blue out and then do the orange. And then here we have the height. So since the orange I want to do on top, I would do thickness of three millimeters and then two for the blue and one for the white. So you just sort of change the height. So I go through and export them all uh, individually after they're rendered. Now the rendering will take a while because you're talking a lot of... Um, it's got a lot of complexity, so don't be surprised if it takes 15 or 20 minutes to render some of these, um, but it's definitely worth the wait. So when you bring this into um, your slicer, and I'm going to use Simplify 3D, but you don't, there's nothing here that requires any special kind of slicer. You can use any kind of slicer that you want. Um, it'll come in huge. By default, the image, uh, when it gets converted to open SCAD, one pixel equals one millimeter. So you can imagine if you have a 700 pixel wide image, it's going to be a 700 pixel wide, 700 millimeter wide, you know, export. So we have to resize all these um, to the size we want. And um, so I usually do a, do the scale, but we have to remember we already with the Z we don't want to scale. We just want to uh, scale the X and the Y. So I'm gonna, it's huge, so I'm gonna scale it down to 4%, 4%, done. And then, um, and at this point, I wanna do a, uh, a line selected model origins. So what that's gonna do, if you just do a center, it's just gonna, you know, spread them out. And if you do to the line origin, it, it's gonna put them where they were in the original OpenSCAD file. So from here, um, you just need to, um, then, uh, you know, do your normal, you know, slice it and, uh, send it to your printer. So that's what I did. And, uh, I was really, really happy with the result. So, um, this is sort of my, my final product. And, um, I think it turned out really well. And so especially for something that was just really quick, um, and yeah, and like I said, um, it was just super simple once you kind of get down workflow. I and mean, there's a few steps, but once you get it down, none of them are really, really that hard to do. And and yeah, you can take any image and convert it into an STL file using this, uh, this tool. So um, that's it for this episode. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, leave them in the comments below. I really like to answer people's questions. And uh, obviously, if you want to see more content, hit the subscribe button. And uh, that's it for this time. So uh, thanks for stopping by and have fun printing.